call through and say, hey, I'm in the area. I need to get you this information. I'm going to swing by and, and get this to you. Um, I, I can see um, trees of green and skies of blue. No, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> my brain just hijacked me. Wow. <laughs> But he did it to himself. There, I did it. I did it. What a wonderful (laughs) Hello and welcome to episode 20 of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. I'm your host, Austin Lopesavero, and I'm here with Chris Ball, Zach McElwain, and Roger Short. The LIA podcast takes you into the conversations of top producing life insurance agents so that you can level up your business. For episode notes and resources, visit liapodcast.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Life Insure Acad. Also, make sure you've subscribed to our text notifications for episode releases and agent resources. All you have to do is send the letters LIA to the number 82149. That's 82149 for the recipient and a message with the letters LIA. In today's episode, we'll be discussing a topic that is on most agents' minds. What does my day-to-day look like now? And as the White House and state governments begin to restart the economy by lifting restrictions placed on businesses across America, many agents will return to the field for the first time in weeks. This transition back to work will be the start of a new normal for our country, but also our industry. So in this episode, we'll outline some best practices for agents to be successful while keeping their clients and their families at the forefront. So guys, what's the first thing for agents to keep in mind during this transition? Austin, I I believe it's going to be shaking the, the rust off. You know? Do you shake rust off or do you scrape it? Do That's you- a good question. <laughs> I think shake it's shaking dirt. the dust off. You shake shaking the, the dust. dust. <laughs> Maybe shake the dust. Scrape shake the rust. Well, shake the dust. Is. I did have a go. car once that <laughs> shook the rust off whenever I drove it. I <laughs> but it kind of feels that I think that we way. all had one of those cars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 91 Corolla. Wow. Isn't that what you drove here? <laughs> <laughs> that was just Dude, me. That car didn't run when it rained. So like I had to plan my day. If it was going to rain that day, I was like, okay. I'll That's like Chris. He doesn't run when it rains either. <laughs> I, don't, I do not. I do not run when it rains. But my um, shaking the the dust off, rust off, whatever you want to call it. I I would say it's it's similar to getting back to working out. You know, um, my and, and you're the office expert. I am. I am. It always comes to a level of dissatisfaction. <laughs> like like oh man, <laughs> how did I get here? How, how did I? It's seldom like but, massive but it's inspiration. Two part. It's how did I get here? Mm-hmm. And oh man, like uh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's time. Yeah, I got a ways to go. <laughs> like yeah. Well, I see the results. I will tell you guys exactly what I think. Okay, I look in the mirror and I think it's time. And then I think, how did I get here? And then I think, there's nothing to feel. <laughs> you just do it. <laughs> That's it. That's all there is to it. You got to do it. So. Uh, I think that's where a lot of people are in their life sales, honestly. You know, like the country's coming back on. They're looking in the mirror and they're like, how did I, <laughs> how did I get here? <laughs> and it's going to take a moment of of getting back into it. It's going to hurt. It's not going to feel good, but you got to do it. And you might not see results right away. I mean, like, yeah, no, you, you won't. So you can plan on these not being maybe the best that you've ever had. <laughs> You're going to fumble and tumble and say something wrong you're gonna uh you're gonna get the um i already have insurance and you you may say uh okay <laughs> you know <laughs> hopefully not but uh you may um run into some bad habits or uh, things will be revealed that were some things maybe even you solved before you might mm-hmm. have even had this figured out and you see uh, i never thought i'd say that but don't worry about it it's a process and you mm-hmm. got to trust it. it. It'll also make you feel like I don't want to do this again. You know, especially if you have like that second day after that workout that's, that's and then the there's worst. another class and you got to go back and you're like, I don't want to go back. I'm sore. It's, it hurts. Like, I know how nothing this about that made me feel good. Yeah. Right. It's like coming home after a bad two or three days in the field trying to get reacclimated yeah. and you don't want to go back out again. And you're but thinking, the only way to change it. Yeah. What's the only way to change it? You just got to, you just got to do keep it. Keep showing up. Keep showing up. I think 80% those. of it is your own mindset. Like, yeah. I joined a, a men's league this year, and you know, in basketball, and I haven't played in years. And it was rough. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was really rough. I couldn't, you know, after one fast break, I'm 
catching my breath for the next three quarters, and then I'm good <laughs> again in the fourth quarter. You know, it was it was unbelievable, but I had to get back to it. And when you when you're talking about with that, like my biggest mistake was I rolled right into it and went right to the game. <laughs> I didn't practice. I didn't go shoot. I didn't get in <laughs> shape. I didn't get on the treadmill. And you can't you can't do that. Your mind has to be sharp. You have to be ready to play that game. You have to be ready to knock on that door mentally. Um, you know, and, and actually use coronavirus. I look at it as an, another opportunity because there's not any lead you shouldn't be able to get in the door. Because if you think about it, a lot of the carriers have made some changes or adjustments to their product or qualifying. Um, and why can't we mention that at the door when we're going to see them? You know, hey, you know, my name's Zach. I'm here with Sen- Senior Benefit Services, and I wanted to reach out to you because I know you sent this in a while back, and this could be a really old lead or, you know, however It, it, it may have come in on a scroll. It may have come it in on a scroll, that old. right? Papyrus. And it doesn't matter. But <laughs> papyrus. Uh, papyrus. Isn't that what it was called? Yes, yeah. a papyrus scroll. Also the worst papyrus. font. Don't use it. I just need to get that out there. The worst <laughs> font is papyrus. From the guy who does unless font. Unless you're printing it on papyrus. <laughs> Whatever you're Again, those are the jokes papyrus. that suck the oxygen out of your story. <laughs> yeah, we know that. Exactly. We, know. Exactly. we do it to you every Sorry, time. That's always happening. We do it. It's done. <laughs> here's, here's the thing you need to know is it took me not saying 10 things to get to that point. <laughs> we just need to switch to mute mics. If we could have that, we'd be fine. You can control it. You can control it. But to be able to say, you know, to the client that I know you may have filled this out a long time ago or you may have got something, you know, in the past, but these are actually new state regulated final expense programs and a lot of them have changed their qualification because of COVID and we just want to see if you're able to qualify. Let me get your information and I'll be right back. Boom. Like with with coronavirus here, like, oh, okay, because there's so much stuff going out. There's stimulus checks, talks of more stimulus checks. You know, you know, I think Chris is giving away Domino's coupons. There's all kinds of things <laughs> that are going on. Um, and why not be able to talk about those things? Mm-hmm. Because it is harder to get qualified for some of these carriers. They have added questions and, and different things in order to do that. And you know, anything you can do at the door, the best thing is is to create curiosity. And mm-hmm. if you can create that curiosity and match it with a need, like you're in the door, you're in a home. And that's why I say like there's there's no such thing as a fresh lead right now. Every lead is now fresh because of Corona. Every lead. Mm-hmm. You need to go back and look at your some of your big weeks that you've had in the past. And you need to bring that back to mind. Like what am I capable of? I mean, like the stock market, right? Past performance is no indicator of, you know, future performance. But it is a it it does give you a, what's possible. It does give you a picture of what's possible. And sometimes you just need to know what's possible. Like if you need to get back and work it out, get a picture of when you're in great shape and hold it up while you're looking in the mirror and saying, <laughs> "There's no feelings here, Chris. I just got to do it." <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, it's yeah. uh, it, it's it's looking at what you've been able to to do before, and uh, where you had strong uh, strong performance, how you did that, yeah. what your schedule looked like. Understanding you know, the you, mindset, what your, your mindset approach. was, your approach. You know, how were you thinking about leads? Were you minimizing leads, or were you saying, "Give me all the leads I can get because there's money in these leads"? Right. So there's, it's it, it's a complete mindset, and you need to go back and and review your review your review your stuff. Your you know what did you do to get in shape? Your training material. Um, you need to go back and and uh, freshen up on stuff. Listen to more of these podcasts by hey, Life Insurance Academy. There's 19 others that you can listen to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is this is landmark, man. We're at a zero. We had another zero. Twenty. We did. Yeah, twenty. That's exciting stuff. And twenty I think, in the twenties. I think we have a pinata after this to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, you just got to get out there and you got to go do it. You you got to get out there and uh, start putting in the reps and. Sometimes, you know, you're not going to have a, a marathon day your first day out because your 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 body's not in uh, fighting shape. But keep doing it. But you got to keep doing it. You know that my my line, and this is a true thing I say to myself is, "There's nothing to feel, just do it." Is um, that just do it? There may be something to that. That may be marketable. We may oh, want to look gosh. at that. Can you write that down, Austin? Oh, just do it. Just do it. But there's okay. nothing to feel, just do it. Um, and and I have to think that way, especially in those tough moments in day two, we'll say day four or five, whatever it is, is looking at the adjustments that need to be made to continue doing it the next day. Because if I just 
have a bad feeling on the second day. Like I can't sit down, Roger, like you're talking about. <laughs> like I, and this is a mistake I make. I don't know about you guys. Like I'm going to do it and I'm going to go hardcore. So I'm going to do the first three episodes of P90X, <laughs> you know, and then it's not an issue of walking. It's an issue of breathing, <laughs> you know, so I have to take the next the next day off or the next three days off because I didn't set myself up for success. But um, being able to adjust, make adjustments so that I can have success later. Uh, so it's important for me. I don't know if you guys do this, but for me, if I don't get a sit, I like to look at it from different angles. Like what, what could I have said there? Did I, did I give them an easy out? Did I address the five major reasons why people buy or don't buy? Like these are all internal thought processes that I have. And, and in order to do that, I just have to remove the emotion. Like I can't feel it. Like I, maybe I say, okay, you can feel this for a minute, but you can't let that make you affect your performance. Yeah. One thing that we've talked about before is, you know, you're the boss, but you're also the employee. So like you have to like be the boss and give yourself a review. Yeah. And then, but you're the employee also <laughs> answering your own question. So like you're giving yourself a review as a boss of every sit you do. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, you know, did you do this? I like to use a different voice too. Like, <laughs> all right, ball, I'm looking at your paperwork here. It's looking a little sloppy kid. <laughs> What you got to an answer for this? And I'm like, I'm sorry, Mr. Ball. I know we have the same last name, but you have a mustache. So, <laughs> but yeah, definitely having that review. Um, and and you know, write it down. Have yeah. a journal to be able to say, okay, because once you write it down, if you're able to see common themes of okay, these three sits, I'm seeing the same phrase. Well, then you know I need to work on my door knock, or I need to work on, you know, transitioning into the sale because we got stuck in core. Um, but being able to see that. Well, you know, one of the other things is when people get back out finally, they're looking for shortcuts and laydowns because they want the quick result. I mean, if you've been off for a while, your income's probably gone down <laughs> significantly. Yeah. I don't care if you were, you know, applying for the benefits. And the stimulus, and you were getting the checks. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, the money you can make in this business is, you know, blows that out of the water. And if you've been off for a little while, or you've been, you, you maybe had some telesales, you, you know, you did a few of those, you didn't really get into a rhythm, and now you're trying to get back to the field. A tendency is to look for the laydowns. And so you're, you, you're skipping steps. Mm -hmm. And when you skip steps, it's not good. It's like trying to do the, you know, the bench press with the heavy weights, the first set, you know, it's, it's not going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> so not that I know how to do that, but, uh, you, you, you start skipping the steps. You, you, you're not, you're not paying attention to the five real reasons why people don't buy. You're not establishing the trust up front. You're trying to review their other policies at the door. You know, you're asking how much they pay and you, you, you get way ahead of yourself. Everything's out of line. You, you've lost control because you're just looking for a quick sale and you're wanting to find somebody who wants to sit down to you and says, I want to buy insurance. And you're going to blow a lot of leads and a lot of opportunity. You got to get back to the basics. Know what, know what it was that you were doing when you were in your, uh, you know, in that prime time when you were slinging, when, when you were gunslinging and putting up some big numbers. What were you doing then? And uh, do you all think that the approach going forward looks like the old way or? Does it look different? Is there a new normal, or do we go back to the old? I, I think it's the new normal is going to be very similar to the old. I think the biggest difference is is the way we think about it. Um, and if we're thinking it's going to be something drastic or different, or they're not going to welcome me in their home, or I'm going to have to wear a full bubble boy bodysuit to go in, <laughs> you know, you're you're setting yourself up for failure. Um, you know, be be adaptable and be flexible for your client on what they need. But like Roger said, you know, going into the home are naturally going to try to sell right away or get back on the horse and trying to get a quick app or laydowns. The one thing we can't forget is what makes us true difference makers and what made you hit your high numbers before was just listening to your client because they will tell you everything they want and they need and how how you they you can earn their trust. They tell you everything. You just have to listen and take your time and not rush it. But I think, you know, no we don't know and we can't even say on this podcast what it's going to be like in 2 months from now. Um but 
why assume it's going to be different? Why don't we just have an open mindset to go help families, like what we're here to do to begin with, and adapt to anything that, that is coming? I personally don't think it will be any different. I think uh, it's just in our own heads, and we may, some of us may be thinking it's going to be different, but the real reason we're thinking that is because we don't want to get off our couch in the first place. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, an own, it's our own excuse of getting that motivation and getting that fire up and to get out the door rather than is the client going to be expecting it differently. And I think we've had people with experiences that would agree with that. Yeah, one thing that we did um, in prep for this uh, episode was we kind of tossed out a line to see what agents who were in the field already um, were saying. Um, and there's been several states uh, co- across the country that have opened up um, and agents are getting out the door, they're getting in the field, uh, and they're getting into clients' homes. Um, and so we wanted to see, you know, what does that look like? What are you experiencing? And widely, um, all of them were saying it kind of felt like it did before. Um, you know, uh, most people are uh, welcoming them in their homes. Um, you know, they're not really bringing it up at the time. And we'll, we'll address some of this kind of approach in a little bit. But, you know, it was a lot of the same. And like I said, even even in talking to them, they were almost almost causing it to be different because they, they were expecting something to be so different. They're like, uh, are you sure you want to buy this insurance? You know, you know, it's kind of <laughs> like being so, you know, e- expecting that change. And it's, it, it really hasn't been, mm-hmm. you know, we had, we had one agent, um, say, you know, Hey, getting back into the field, um, actually has been easier than he anticipated because he had been doing telesales. He was still sharp. Right, he was still going through the process. He was still doing the underwriting. He was still doing the presentation. Now, be it it was a, a little different, but you know, he's like, it, it kept me prepped to return. And so, if you've been doing telesales, um, you're ready. Don't don't fear um, that you know it's it's all different again. It's all changed. And a, and another thing that he said was, you know, he's even implemented some of the things from telesales that he learned during the, during that time of like, he's implemented things from the script such as, you know, Hey, this may be the first money you see, like stuff that wasn't even in his initial presentation that he figured out, okay, this was a great point that resonated with clients. Mm-hmm. He's now incorporating that into his sits now, so he's able to apply that. Um, I think I think one of the things he said was that he got a, a money objection, um, just you know about you know finances or, or money, and he was able to say that this company that we're looking at for you is one of the few taking people at your age with the added restrictions, and you, you don't have the same choices you had before, and we, we probably need to go ahead and get this taken care of before any more restrictions are yeah, imposed. I mean, urgency. There's a lot of companies now that aren't even offering benefits to people over 75. Right. They're just not even offering it anymore. It's part of the new normal. I mean, yeah. you have to have new carriers in your tool belt to cover your entire client base. I think one of the biggest differences um, in, I guess, added skills that a lot of agents had worked on during this, um, this COVID era is uh, is really been able to maintain control because doing telesales, going through the scripts, uh, being able to get them on the phone, keep them on the phone, build the trust on the phone, and then move through all the way to an application on the phone, not being face to face, it's a lot more difficult to maintain that control um, of the of the phone sit, um, and now being able to translate like that 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 really strengthen that ability and that skill. So when you're going back to the home and you are face to face. You're going to be able to close a lot more um, because I think a lot of brand new agents, that's the one thing they're missing is is maintaining control and emotional control Um, because they can practice their presentation. Um, You know, you can learn a door knock to get in the door. We can teach you that easily. But actually being able to close is maintaining that control and those objections throughout the sit and you develop that in telesales. So whether you've been doing telesales or not, um, the approach I think does kind of look like a hybrid, though, right? Um, I think there is a hybrid, and I um, the one thing I will say: the people who have been working during this time have a distinct advantage mm-hmm. uh, because um, they. I think there's something about activating your brain and embracing challenges that 
uh, at some point it feels like you're running through the mud a little bit. And then once you figure something out and you've had success, once the barriers are gone, you are, you didn't know how great you are. You don't mm-hmm. know it yet. Until and you it's get, no longer raining and you're on a hard yeah. surface. Yeah. 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 You're not in the mud anymore. Well, back to like everything. Yeah. You, you've, you're, you're maintained working out. I mean, you're, mm-hmm. you know, you might be doing a different uh, you did exercise, leg day. but you yeah, know, that you might be sore in, in that area, but generally you, you have been working out by doing telesales. Yes, I agree. And I, I think it's going to be interesting to see people add the, the, the tool belt and uh, have more success as a result of being able to, I mean, you might run into situations where you knock on the door and somebody is uncomfortable and uh, you can tell them, hey, no worries, I'm going to jump in my car and I'm going to give you a call and we can do this whole thing. I can get you the information in your driveway. Mm-hmm. You can look out the window and wave to me and I'll wave to you and <laughs> It'll feel like we're just having a conversation. But, you know, being able to uh, have more options to pivot and feel confident. But I will say the people who have been running are going to see some pretty quality numbers that they didn't probably mm-hmm. weren't even expecting. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, the people who've really caught up on Netflix are going <laughs> to, it's going to be like, they're going to be able to quote some lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but it's going to feel like they've, they're eating the elephant, you mm-hmm. know, and they just do one bite at a time, one step at a time, whatever it takes. Uh, you you will it, find it. just it. might take longer. Yeah, it's going to you know. take a little bit of Even work. Even if you were eating the whole elephant watching Netflix, <laughs> like that doesn't mean it has to be that way day one. Like you can decide to start now and pull out your presentation, start practicing, you know, uh, watch videos on door knocking, practice with your wife, your girlfriend, your husband, whoever, your neighbor. Hey, just say, you know, go knock on your neighbor's door and say, hey, can I rehearse some of these door knocks with you? Like there's things you can do. Now you're probably thinking I'll never do that, right? But then that's that's an excuse, but you don't have to just roll out to the card being crazy rusty and burn your first five leads or your first five door knocks and say, okay, now I'm ready. Like you don't have to, mm-hmm. you can choose to, but you don't have to. There's, you have every opportunity around you. You just got to think outside the box, lean out to people that help, you know, podcasts or whoever that is an influencer that you trust, you know, and, and, and get some practice in before you hit the field. Mm-hmm. And then you're sharp or sharper because if you watch yep. a lot of Netflix, you're not going to be razor sharp. But you're sharper than what you will be. If we if we look at the positives though, from these people, it's okay. Yeah, that's fine. We can't we we can't go back two months ago and say okay, I'm not going to binge watch TV and do all that. You can't go back. So what we can do is we can move forward from here. Here's the positives. For one, you should be able to have all the freedom to run as much as you want because you've cuddled with your significant other every night. Uh, for the last two months, there's no other shows to watch because you've watched every single one. So you can really pour in and focus on your career. You have almost all your honey do list of your home projects complete. For at least you're probably got a free hall pass for the next four or five years on on home projects. Like there's nothing else to do. All the gardening to distract is done. You. Right, your yard <laughs> is probably immaculate at this point. Um, so when you look at the pauses from that, yes, you got all that stuff taken care of. Now there's no more. You've used all your excuses. There's nothing else Everything left. Everything else is done. Now looking at the new normal for agents, do you all still see the phone as a part of that, or is the phone going away? Uh, I think, I, personally, I was reluctant to to use the phone. Okay, like uh, I, my joke was, you know, I'm working with my face, you know? <laughs> Not, and I never said that. Like, hey, I'm this great looking dude. It, it's that I'm approachable. Like, I look like. Al Borland, Drew Carey, whatever it is, like somebody's friend. <laughs> Just, is that why you have a mirror the, the in front of your picture. computer screen? Yes, that's why. The mental picture that these listeners have of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, I was I was always reluctant to to pick up the phone, but I do see that becoming more a part of this. Um, I could see for sure uh, when you're working your leads and you're having trouble connecting with people not being afraid on Wednesday uh, to call through and say, hey, I'm in the area. I need to get you this information. I'm going to swing by and, and get this to you. Um, I, I can see um, trees of green and skies of blue. No, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> my brain just hijacked me. Wow. <laughs> but he did it to himself. There, I did Zach. it. I did right. it. I mean, what at least he's doing it. What a wonderful Yes, that's it. But um, 
seeing uh, you know, and this was mentioned earlier, but uh, doing a, a sit in the driveway while they're in their home, even if they're healthy, there are some folks who just aren't comfortable. And if it's raining, they don't want to sit on the porch, and they'll tell you it's a bad time. But being able to just say, "Hey, I'm going to be uh, right here. I'm going to jump in my car. I'm going to give you a dial and uh, be able to to do that." I do think there will be people who. Uh, because of lead cost of direct mail or digital leads um, that may have uh, a work at two sets of leads, one for direct mail for Monday and Tuesday. And then on Wednesday and Thursday, they like working from home and they pick up their digital uh, digital uh, leads for telesales. So I, I see a lot of great opportunity opening up in hybrid work that can be done. If you if you're calling to set appointments, if you don't door knock, if you're not a door knocker, you know routing your leads, running them like we've like so many agents in the final expense space does. Episode ten, yeah, and you're see you know the actual episode numbers. I, I think you're I, so good at that. Like, I, I, it's I, like I, Rain Man dropping. I, I know we've talked of... about it at some time in the past. I just don't know which episode. So thank you for the reference. But if you're not a door knocker and you're calling to set up appointments, you could be running mortgage leads. You could be. Um, you could be running final expense leads in either one of those, and you're calling to set appointments. If you if you get any reluctance at all, you could say that's no problem. We can do this over the phone. I can go ahead and schedule you now for a Thursday morning or Friday yeah. morning when you're done doing your your home visits, and you can set them up for the end of the week. And you can do them virtually. You can do a Zoom meeting. You can do a FaceTime meeting, or you can just do a telephone uh, meeting. I mean, you have so many more tools in your arsenal, and I think. You know, having access to good carriers, being able to implement them into the the go forward plan, um, is going to put you in a much stronger position. So the hybrid approach, I think, is going to make agents even stronger because they have backups. If you can't get a hold of those people, not only can you do a call ahead, you know, and yeah. say, "Hey, I'm in the area. I need to swing by and get this information." Episode eleven. Yeah. If you get any reluctance, you can set an appointment to do a phone meeting. So it's it's okay. It all works. You you take the excuse out of the client. I mean, there's not any reason for them not to yeah. see you. Uh, yeah. If they're busy, you still can see them no matter what. Yep. yep. This just takes a few minutes. I'd like to go ahead and schedule time to, to go over this information and, and qualify you with your assessment. Uh, would Saturday morning at 10 a.m. work okay for you? Mm-hmm. Great. All right, I'll schedule you now. I'll send you a reminder. Thanks. I'm not feeling well then. <laughs> I'm not feeling well on Saturday <laughs> at 10. Yeah, it's hard to get that excuse, isn't it? Yes. Now, Zach, earlier you mentioned that all leads are fresh right now. Um, can you kind of explain a little bit more on that as well as, you know, who are agents, who can they go see right now as they come back? Well, if you think about what a lead is, it's just an opportunity to have a conversation about with someone about insurance. Well, when you have a crisis like this uh, that's happening, um, <laughs> It heightens people's sense of family, love, protection, um, and what if somebody dies because it's a real possibility for everybody. Uh, Normally, when people receive leads, um, whatever platform they receive them on, they fill them out because of one reason. Something happened in their life that made them realize that they need to do something or or look into protecting their family. It just so happens the entire country (laughs) is thinking that right now. So regardless if it's an older lead, which means they've thought about this in the past, or a brand new lead, which they're thinking about it now, every possible type of lead um, is now refreshed because of coronavirus. Um, it's an opportunity to, to at least have a conversation with somebody. Yeah, one agent that we talked to, uh, again, in preparation for this episode, said that uh, one thing that he's been doing that he actually carried over from telesales uh, in our telesales script, we, we said, you know, hey, you know, with the uh, with COVID-19, we've seen an uh, influx of people requesting information. We're sorry it took so long to get to you, even if it was like an hour, right? He's doing the same thing for all of his leads. Hey, uh Miss Jones, I'm so sorry it took so long to get to you with everything going on in the world right now. I'm sure you can imagine that we've been pretty busy trying to get to all of our leads. Um, I'm here today, and then he goes into the three questions that that client's asking, um, straight into the door knock dance uh, at a distance, the door knock distanced dance. Exactly, (laughs) and and that's what I'm saying. Like Right now, we all have a free 
rebuttal to objections. It's COVID-19. Like, how can we not use that for any, like, it doesn't matter who you're talking to. Um, right now you can cloverleaf or knock on random people's doors. The referrals, man. Referrals. Like, everybody's thinking about this because all you see on the news is people dying, people getting sick. Stay home so you don't die. Like, it's it, it's 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 pretty extreme. So it's not like people haven't thought about it, you know, where before, and there's no sports on TV, right? Before they're watching NASCAR, drinking a Milwaukee's best, you know, not, you know, just hanging out and you're knocking on the door and they're like, oh yeah, I filled that out about six weeks ago. You know, blue ribbon. Wanting to, you know, talk about their family, but um, there's not, they're not chilling and watching, uh, you know, NASCAR now. Mm-hmm. So they're probably watching the news or the same shows on repeat and, you know, if you notice, there's a lot more life insurance commercials that have been popping up as well. So it's on their mind more. And mm-hmm. that's an opportunity for us to just go have a conversation with them. We're not knocking on the door saying, hey, do you need insurance? Do you need a policy at all? Yeah. To Chris's point on the referrals side, like if you've been talking to people on the phone and they're in your area, stop by, say hi, put a face to the name, right? Uh, if you didn't do a video call, let them see who you are. And then again, ask for the referral. Hey, while I'm in your area, uh, is there anyone around here that you know I can protect like I protected you and your family? Or even if you didn't, what if it was a, a telesales lead that you never got a hold of? Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, it was really hard to get to you. We, we, we've been crazy with this coronavirus, but we wanted to make sure you got this information. You actually requested this online and blah, blah, blah. And you go through your door knock spill right there. It just takes a few minutes. Let me get your stuff. We can take care of you and get you off our list. I mean, in, in some situations, we're doing, you've, you've heard this, we're doing the text, we're doing the email, and still sometimes no response. If, you're, if they're in your area and you can get to them, what's wrong with stopping by? You know, you can categorize those by area, by zip code, pull them together, go out. Do some do some home visits. I and, guarantee and if they told you, you no. Yeah, still go see them. Even if they told you no, because oftentimes they think they're being sold something over the phone. There's mm-hmm. a lack of trust. Now, when you show up, you got your lanyard on, your badge, your ID, your branded apparel. You know, your clipboard. I'm here to take care of this and get you some information. It has a different context. It's like you cared enough to show up. So I think it's harder to say no to a referral when you're face to face with somebody and they see that you cared enough to stop by. Yeah. Well, especially if you're working with that head on your shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> no, with that face on that head. And Brad Pitt and I were just blessed dudes. That's <laughs> oh, it. Gosh. You know? You just work with what you got. Yeah. Uh one of our agents said that um from his experience being out in the field that at this point, people just want people to talk to, yes. right? And so if you can just stop by, whether they're a lead, uh, whether they're an existing client, whether they're an old lead, just stop by and talk to yeah, these that's people crazy, and do the conversation. Because our market that we serve, they already just want somebody to talk to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and with you know, even with the people on the phone, they're like, yeah, I haven't been able to do anything. I mean, I have did my I did my garden, but I, that's about all I can do. There's nothing else. I can't go anywhere because, mm-hmm. you know, our, our clients, they're sometimes limited in what's around them from where they live or their mobility to be able to get places. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's – they, they're starving for somebody to talk to. Yeah. Um, this agent said, you know, he he's, went and saw someone and – their own kids, they haven't even talked to them or seen them. You know, so you know what we do matters not only in protecting people, but also just being a light to people to Absolutely. be able to talk to people. So, uh, be a human. Go talk to people, and you know, you never know what conversations uh, you're going to have with uh, these these people. One of the interesting things I thought from uh, one of our agents, uh, Bart from Georgia, he said that uh, don't get into the you know, the political side of COVID, of whether the country's opening up fast enough or slow enough, you know, and their whole debate about who's <laughs> controlling the the lives of millions of people because that just gets political and it can create divisiveness and you don't really know the mindset of that person. They may have had someone in their family that they lost as a result of COVID. So their perspective is different than yours. And while many of us think, yeah, there's been an overreach in some states, more so than in other states, some people believe that some states are not being protective enough. And so... It can be a political moment, and you're not there to to raise that ire. That mm-hmm. ire, ire is the word, I think. You're not there to 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 get them riled up about that or to take a position one side or the other because it's not going to 
move forward your agenda of protecting their family, which was based on the request they had in the first place. So you can be sensitive to that as well. Um, make sure you're make sure you're doing the things, you know, your social distance, safe dance at the door. Make sure you're also doing the other things that make them feel safe and uh, while you're in that process. Another thing to keep in mind regarding leads is, you know, a lot of agents are on a direct mail lead source, right? And and so some of them might have gotten lucky and put in the order to have the leads come in right when their state opens. But for most agents, they either are sitting on age leads, which, you know, like Roger and Zach said, you know, they're not aged anymore, or they're still waiting on their leads to come in and they don't have anyone to work right now. Who can they see? What are their options in this wait time? Well, I mean, they can, uh, first of all, get digital leads and those can be turned around within a, a few days. You know, if you connect, you connect with us, we can get you turned around in a few days. Get leads coming in almost immediately for you to, to, to call. And until your state opens up, right, um, that, that would be a way to go. If, uh, if your state uh, is now opening up, the older leads that you have, any digital leads and direct mail leads, they're all good sources. If you pulled the trigger too soon thinking your state was going to open up and your direct mail leads came in three weeks ago and you're just mad at your governor because your governor <laughs> is still saying stay home, stay safe, save lives and everybody's still scared and you're, you want to be socially responsible and you have this pent-up anger and frustration and you're like, I'm wasting my money, please know that you can call those leads, you can do a telesales option for them and even if you talk to them on the phone, it doesn't negate the fact that you can't go and door knock them later when your state does open, mm-hmm. because uh, the the need is still real. So uh, one of the one of the approaches that we've taken for our team and with leads in general is right now no lead is a bad lead, and any lead that we uh, try to work over the phone can be door knocked later. It's not going it's it's not going to diminish your opportunity. That request was real at the moment when it was submitted. Yeah, the environment and the landscape has changed maybe since they filled that out or while they filled that out, and you're in a work environment that has to adapt. But please know that uh, you'll have multiple opportunities to still connect with that family. So don't lay back, lean in. Mm-hmm. Now, Roger, one thing that you mentioned there was you know this concern of um, of seeing agents and governors and states and. We don't want to get into the politics of it, but we do want to be mindful that you know there is a threat to our client base. And if you listen to our COVID uh, special episode, uh, we covered a lot of uh, precautions that we've taken um, and even put out a resource that you can use. Um, but I do want to, you know, I don't want to end this episode without talking about, you know, the mindfulness that we need to have for our clientele and for our families uh, as we come back home. Um, so protect yourself, right? If you're not feeling well, don't leave the house. Yeah. Stick our, with telesales. Our social responsibility is uh, needs to still be very high priority. I mean, if we're going to call ourselves difference makers because that's what we do and we protect families, we need to protect families mm-hmm. while they're alive. Theirs and yeah, ours. And ours and the people that we, you know, their families, uh, uh, their loved ones our loved ones and the interactions that, that are entailed from that. And you you may feel, you know, you may be down the line that this is way overblown and, you know, way more people die from the flu. And that, you know, you may be preaching that everywhere. You may be one of those outspoken people on that side. You may be on the other side saying, if you leave your house and you don't have a mask on, you're killing people. I mean, mm-hmm. those are two extremes, right? Um, as an organization, as someone in this life insurance business, the business of protecting lives which is what, what it is that we do, um, we need to be socially responsible in this environment of a virus that right now there's no vaccine for. So please be socially responsible. Have a mask ready. It's not that big of a deal to wear a mask and have a conversation. There's mm-hmm. people around wearing masks all the time. You go to the grocery stores. You, I mean, at Lowe's this weekend, almost everybody had a mask on, but it didn't stop anybody from doing their thing. So like, don't get yourself so worked up in a craw about a mask. Like, Think okay, I can protect this senior couple. They're in a you know they're in that age where they're more susceptible than younger people, or they may be immunocompromised. And so, just be sensitive to that. Have mm-hmm. things ready. You know, clean your clean your stuff. Disinfect your hands. Wash your hands. Make those things available. You know, don't get up on them and, and hugging on them. And you know, there's there's things you can do to still take care of those people, to love on them, and be responsible to your family and their family. So, go out there and get it done, but do so responsibly. A big thing that you said is, you know, um, if you aren't going to wear it, 
have it ready. Have these things ready and be prepared. So that way, if you enter a market and you start observing as you're driving through the town or the the area that you're seeing people wearing masks at gas stations and at restaurants. Okay, well, when I go to this door for this leads uh, for this uh, for this client, I should probably wear a mask. But if you're driving through the town and no one's wearing a mask, you know you might not have to wear that mask to the door. Uh, the, the biggest thing here is, and if you've been listening to the past six or seven episodes, is this word, adaptability. Observe what's going on around you and adapt. You know, there's some states that are more sensitive than others. I mean, if you're in New Jersey right now, in New York, in California, there's some states that have been harder hit than other states. That's just a fact. Mm-hmm. Be aware of what's going on. Be responsible. You know, you can still do your job. You know, I've been I've been telling my wife, I'm like, I, I think the response, you know, for me personally, I think the response has been um, somewhat overblown, you know, overreacted. But I think that's that's probably the the natural instinct of most people that are in a leadership position is first of all to protect, right? Especially on the health side, the health professionals. That's that's really their only concern. Yeah. They're, They're acting not, on information they have, acting on information they have or information that is given to them, which they don't know whether it's accurate or not. So they'd rather err on the side of safety than than being wrong. Mm-hmm. And um, so, as an as an individual who's out there serving families, if you're seeing a senior. You know, if you're going to be in close proximity and you're concerned about your family or theirs, just wear a mask. It's sitting at their table. Mm-hmm. It's not that big of a deal. If you're not, in, if you're far enough away and you're six, eight, ten feet away, and you're and and you're comfortable, you have to assess the situation to keep them safe, you safe, and um, until you know we get our hands around this thing. But do so responsibly, take into consideration the the different. I guess, opinions on this across the board. And if you're ready, you can adapt to any situation. If you're not ready, some people will turn you away. So, you know, don't let that be an obstacle of you helping them and for you getting a sale and helping your family. Don't, don't let it be an obstacle. Adapt. And again, in preparation for this episode, we did reach out to agents just to see um, how the field is responding to them being back in it, how they're responding. And so we got a few different pieces of feedback. Uh, one agent, Hayden from Kentucky, Uh, here in our own state, he said, you know, uh, he didn't really bring it up unless the client brought it up or until he was further into core. You know, it's not a thing until you make it a thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so he wasn't bringing it up. Um, Now, if they did bring it up, then he would react and and take those precautions. Um, We have um, Patty from Michigan saying, you know, several of her sits have been just like normal and, you know, they were even hugging, you know. Every agent is going to have their own uh, point of reference set of things they're comfortable with, but so are the clients. So, you know, feel it out as you go. Um, but from Patty's experience, you know, people are people are very kind right now. Uh, they are not only wanting to talk to people, but everyone has this kind of grace towards each other, um, and and this we're all in this together mindset. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it's just people interaction. So be encouraged by that. You're you're going to see people, and you know, people are kind. Um, we have. Bart uh, from Georgia, from a protection standpoint, Bart said he had a mask with him uh, in his binder so that if the client asked for him to wear one, he had one ready. Um, But he even had one client reach out his hand to give him a handshake uh, at the door knock. You know, he knocked on the door and he said he stood back. uh, And after the initial uh, door knock distance dance, the guy stuck out his hand and he said he shook his hand. He said it was a real trust building moment for them that says, you know, not only does the guy trust Bart, but Bart trusts the guy. Um, now, Bart did say he did use hand sanitizer after <laughs> yeah. the sit, um, but he said he's always done that. That's always been a part of it. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's some things to have ready to protect yourself and to protect your client. So have the have the mask ready, have the hand sanitizer ready. And, you know, in, in the COVID episode, we also had a protection guideline sheet. Go ahead and download that. We'll put that in this episode's show notes as well. And that just walks through to reassure the client, hey, we know this is um, a concern for a lot of people. Here's what we're doing. So be prepared and protect yourself and protect your clients. That's what we're all about. And hey, if they say no, oh, you've done the telesales. You know how to do it. Continue the the sit from your car. Call them up. Wave at different times of the uh, of the presentation. Yeah. Say, give them a big thumbs up. All right, we're moving forward on to the next thing. 
But remember, we're real people protecting other real people and their families. What we do matters. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the mantra of being a difference maker because we protect lives and we ensure families' protections once, once you are gone or once that tragedy hits, we also need to be mindful of that during the process of, of how we help them. And until we get our hands fully around this thing, just be aware of, of uh, other people's sensitivities, other people's susceptibilities, and, uh, and how to interact with them and help them based on their request to the best of your ability while keeping them safe, keeping your family safe, and just get out there and get after it. So we're, we're excited the states are opening up, and um, we're excited that uh, we, are, um, we are going to be able to be responsible and get back to work, and uh, we are encouraged. So we want to encourage you. And if you need any additional resources, I'm sure Austin's going to point you in the right direction. Austin, I was also thinking earlier when you were uh, talking about things you can do and the guys were talking about you know, watching game tape and videos and listening to more podcasts. Of course, we have the Life Insurance Academy, right? We have the Life Insurance Academy, and you can reach out to us, and we might even figure out some kind of discount program for you to get into Life Insurance Academy. If you reach out and you want access to our entire library, video content, training resources on every aspect of life insurance sales in this Slides, simplified printouts, issue handouts. space. If you want access to any of that, please reach out to us. We will, uh, we're going to put together something and uh, we'll give you a discounted subscription where you can get on there and start accessing all these great materials. And you might even get to see Chris's beautiful face. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Some lucky that's folks worth, out there. That's worth $39.99 a month right there. <laughs> what a bargain. <laughs> Well, like the guy said, there's plenty of resources associated with what we talked about today. If you need any of those, if you want to look at the show notes, um, if you you'd like to see things visually um, and see everything we talked about today, or just see Chris's beautiful face, uh, check out these show notes at liapodcast.org slash EP20. That's liapodcast.org slash EP20. As always, thanks so much for listening to the Life Insurance Academy podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening, rate us five stars, and you know, leave us a review. Leave us some comments on the website. Let us know if you're using this, if it's working, uh, and any other tips you may have. We know that there's a wealth of knowledge out there, and we just want to share it with you. Also, you can check out our YouTube. Uh, we've been uploading our podcast there in case you want to listen at home. Uh, we hope to do video episodes soon. Uh, or you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Life Insure Acad. The Life Insurance Academy podcast is produced and mixed by me, Austin Lopes Severo. Our theme song is by Flashing Lights. We hope to connect with you soon. Until next episode, stay healthy and go be a difference maker.